pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do have any public discussion from the board this evening? No. Uh, a few announcements. First, I'd like to uh, mention, of course, as I, I have throughout the summer, that the band concerts uh, continue. They will continue to, uh, with the town band, they will continue to August 5th. Uh, I want to thank uh, Conductor Archambault for inviting me to participate last night in one of the numbers. It was a lot of fun doing Nell, the farmer's daughter. So that was... Uh, <laughs> If you weren't there in person, I think they televised that, much to my chagrin. Uh, but thank you so much. It was a lot of fun, and it really is a good time. And, uh, and there was a lot of people there last night. Uh, as band concerts go, their last band concert will be August 5th, but there will be an August 12th concert now that will be added uh, that will be sponsored by the Boys and Girls Club as a benefit. It will feature a Lunenburg band called the Spy Tones. Uh, and that will, it'll be held just like any other band concert. The, there will be food and beverages on sale there. There will be a 50-50 raffle. So it will be just like an extension of the band concert, except instead of the town brass band, they will be uh, a four-piece surf band from Lunenburg uh, called the Spy Tone. So I invite everybody to come out and support the, the band and support the Boys and Girls Club. Also, I'd like a reminder that uh, the farmer's market continues on Sundays from 10 to 1 right at the uh, Ritter building or in that parking lot of the Ritter building. So that is something worth uh, supporting, certainly. And uh, an announcement also about the band concert that I have is that the band uh, is looking for a sponsor for this next Monday, Monday night's concert so if you are I believe that is the 29th of July so if you're an organization and you want to sponsor it please get in touch with uh, somebody at town hall here or get in touch with conductor Archambault directly and offer to uh, sponsor the band concert and lastly for those who are historic uh, historical minded uh, I've been told by uh, the board's own Mr. Ebersol that August 1st of this year, which is next Thursday, is Lunenburg's 285th birthday. So the anniversary, as a side note, it also happens to be my dad's 82nd birthday, mm, who's a lot younger than Lunenburg, thank God. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's a nice note. There's, no, there's nothing that I, we are aware of that is being held in commemoration, but it is just a good piece of trivia, and it is certainly worth noting uh, at a meeting like this. Do I have any public discussion from the public? Seeing none, we will go right into, we have no appointments. Current business, approve the IMA with Townsend. Where are we with that, Madam Town Manager? Um, we will need to continue that item at least until next week, if not the first week in August. Um, the Townsend Town Manager is just coming back from vacation and we had talked last week that um, there were a couple of items that you wanted me to address with him so I will be doing that next week okay that will be continued approved pilot agreement with new gen in both both of the pilot agreements um, we are awaiting to hear back from the developers uh, I believe the assessor has provided all of the information to both the both of the developers and we just haven't heard anything back so both of those items will need to be continued as well uh, we will bypass the board of selectmen policies and procedures and put that at the end of tonight's meeting so we will go to FY 13 final budget report and request for budget transfers okay I do not have um, a written narrative report for you I do hope <coughs> to have that um, I had hoped to have it for this evening's meeting, but uh, we're, I'm still awaiting a few pieces of information from accounting. Um, I do expect to have that Thursday for the Finance Committee, so as soon as it's available, I will send it to you. But what I am asking this evening is for your approval on a couple of transfers. 
uh, within the budget to close out a couple of deficits. These transfers, um, the request is coming under Chapter 44, Section 33B, Transfers. I've provided you with a copy of the law. This is a, a process or a procedure that allows the, the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee to make adjustments at the end of the year or, or just in the beginning of the next fiscal year for the prior fiscal year under certain circumstances. And we can transfer um, up to 3% or $5,000, whichever is greater. So town meeting approves um, appropriations in certain groupings. We have general government unclassified, public safety, um, those the library, the school, and any transfers between those outside of town meeting can only be done under this provision of Mass General Law and at the end of, of the fiscal year. So we have essentially closed the books for fiscal 2013. We did have a couple of um, overages in certain areas. Um, and perhaps I, I could just go through those. If, if you look at the, I think it's the, the second spreadsheet, it's called Fiscal 2013 Adjustments. It's a three-page spreadsheet, and it shows all of the line items that are appropriated at town meeting. And so in, in maturing debt, we have, we're returning $1.66. In unclassified, $11,654.64. In general government, we are overexpended $13,219.73. And this is, um, this overage essentially is to encumber money to allow us to um, do the codification of the bylaws because we had some money left over in other areas. Um, we have encumbered that money, but, but it was in um, a different appropriation. So. I am asking for that, but that, that's essentially what that overage is in legal expense. Then on the second page, um, central purchasing, there we are at zero, so we expended 100% of that appropriation. Protection, which is police, fire, building inspection, um, dispatch, we are returning $3,000. $394.91 in health and sanitation, $1,973.33. Nothing in DPW. We did encumber um, everything for roads there, the remainder that we had. Assistance, which is the Council on Aging and Veterans Benefits, $1,344.32. Education, which includes um, both the Lunenburg School Department and Monty Tech. $1,281.74 in library, $9,990.04. So for a total um, return of $16,421.91. Um, that, is, that is the net of what is being returned essentially on a 30, <coughs> about a $30 million budget. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, the only thing that raises a flag to me in all this is we went at a special town meeting to appropriate extra money for the library and that they're returning almost $10,000. So can you explain where that came from? You know, I, I can't at this point. I can get an answer, but I just haven't had the opportunity yet really to, to dig into any of these. I did provide um, a detailed line item expenditure report. Um, and I, I can tell you which lines they're returning from, but I, I, can't ex I can't tell you why without talking to the director. <coughs> Essentially, um, it's, the big is library staff, $7,710.28. I, I do know they did have some vacancies for periods of time. Um, okay. that, that still would be pretty significant because that's their part-time staff line, but I'd be happy to talk to the director and um, to get a, a more definitive answer for you. And as a follow-on to that, if we don't spend a certain amount in the library, we don't qualify for state aid, we risk accreditation losses, blah, blah, blah. So how does that impact that? Well, the interesting thing is um, what you actually expend, as far as I know, and I dug into this pretty deep during the budget, 
the state does not look at what you actually expend. They look at what you appropriate from year to year. <laughs> oh, that's dangerous. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I mean, this part of this part of this comes down to that. I mean, this is a totally separate conversation, but some of this comes down to, you know, the library commissioners and what they're allowing and not allowing. Because from what we just heard, and I've heard the same information too, it seems like it's kind of a haphazard rule. So as long as you keep appropriating it, you don't spend it. That doesn't make any sense. You'd think that you'd have to spend it on the library, which is why I question this kind of overage because it's compared to the size of their budget, it's it's Significant. more sizable than the other ones, certainly. Right. I, I knew. I know they do have to report on materials of what's actually spent. So that part they've fully expend that part. But I don't know about the staffing part. So I am asking for your approval to transfer um, that total well on the on the one page sheet that says chapter 44 section 33 B transfers request to approve from unemployment expense to legal expense eleven thousand six hundred fifty four dollars and sixty four cents from Veterans Administration to legal expense five hundred ninety one dollars from Registrar of Graves to legal expense two hundred and eighty nine dollars and nine cents and again that's essentially so that we could do that codification of the bylaws project and then from building inspector to inspector of weights and measures, $685. We have a, a fairly new inspector of weights and measures. We had a gentleman who is the full-time inspector in Lemonster now, was, was doing our work on a part-time basis for a, a long period of time. And he had acquired a lot of, or a lot of the equipment that he was using really was from the city of Lemonster. So he was using it over here. The new inspector has borrowed some of that equipment, but there are certain things that he just needs to purchase. And uh, we didn't have a good handle on that when we were putting the budget together, so he did have to, to make some purchases, and these really are one-time purchases. Um, and so that, that's why we have the overage there. So again, these, these are transfers that you can make <coughs> with the um, concurrence of the Finance Committee at the end of the fiscal year. I, I do have one question. And that is uh, with the chapter that you gave us about municipal finance that allows us to make these kind of transfers along with the finance committee. Yeah. Uh, I'm just seeing this for the first time today. So I, but I'm looking at that last, that last clause that talks about the amount transferred from one department to another or within a department may not exceed in the aggregate 3% of the annual budget of the department from or within which the transfer is made, or $5,000, right. whichever is greater. But we're transferring $11,000, which is both greater than $5,000 and more than 3% of what was appropriated. No, it's not It's not more than 3% of, the, the way that we look at this and the, the town accountant looks at it is unclassified. Okay, we, so it's the, not just the unemployment The appropriation, itself. right, is, is the unclassified appropriation, which is, um, you know, without going back, w would be in excess of two million dollars. Okay, but it's still more than. Right. So it's three percent or five thousand, whichever is greater. It's po okay. it's very poorly. Okay. Worded. I think I think it's if I as I'm reading this, I think I asked the same exact <laughs> yes. question last year. So. Right, because you'd think, <laughs> you'd think, five thousand was the cap the way it's. But it's not. <laughs> Gotcha. And then I did um, provide a spreadsheet on revenues. And again, I, I will provide a narrative uh, within the next couple of days. But in terms of revenues, uh, the spreadsheet I provided is just local receipts. And in total, our um, local receipts, we came in at about 15000 less than what we budgeted. Um, which is not unusual. There, there are a couple of items that I wanted to point out. Motor vehicle excise, we came in about $51,000 less than what we budgeted. That, that's the first, the first line. And unfortunately, this happens more often than not. We receive motor vehicle excise commitments from our deputy collector. The deputy gets them from the state. 
And there's always one that comes in at the end of May or the beginning of June, so it's due 30 days later. And last year was the only year within probably five plus years that we actually got that in time so it could be issued on or before June 1st and due, or you know May 31st, due by June 30th. So we, we received this last commitment um, June 15th, I believe. So I think a, a good portion of the shortage has to do with that commitment. We had about 200 bills in that commitment, so it was, it was fairly substantial. So that, that is a, a disappointment. Our penalties and interest, though, we exceeded budget by almost $100,000. So that's people paying um, taxes late. That, that's what we would be collecting there. Under departmental revenue schools, we exceeded the budget by about $62,000. That, that is the rental for the Pasios building. Under departmental revenue other, we were under budget by about $70,000. That's the ambulance, so that's something that I'm going to have to take a further look at because that is surprising. And then the next one down, licenses under uh, almost $109,000. That's essentially building permits. And I know, at, at least at the time, I was hoping that we would have at least one of those solar projects that we would have had a building permit pulled on one of the solar projects based on where we were when we put this budget together. Um, supplemental tax, we exceeded budget by $38,000. That is for, um, we do assessments here based on valuation as of January 1st. So anytime there's a change in value between January 1st and June 30, um, and, and a building permit has been issued, we do a supplemental tax, and that, that comes in as a local receipt rather than um, under our tax revenues. And then, I mean, that, that is, well, one other thing that I wanted to mention, down at the bottom, uh, Meadowwoods Water Betterment, it appears that they are delinquent in paying that betterment by about, I think that's $16,800. You will see, though, if you look back a year ago, this happens every once in a while where, where they'll get a couple of months behind. So if you look a year ago, they made um, more payments. And it wasn't because they were ahead. They were behind before. So probably I, I wouldn't be surprised w if within the next couple of months we get that additional payment. So again, in total, for for local receipts, we collected 99.39% of, of what we had anticipated. And then then if you account for these, these other transfers, it, the transfer from water, excuse me, transfer from sewer enterprise, transfer from sewer betterment, those are things we have to, if they don't come in as we expect them to, they're netted against our um, our local receipts because we have to make that up. So in total, we're at nine, almost 99% collected as of June 30 of what we expected. So even though there were some, some significant variances, which I'll have to look at in more detail, we essentially collected what we needed to in terms of local receipts for the budget. Now, do you want us to vote on this this evening? Yes, I would appreciate that. Anybody have any questions about the transfers and about everything that was distributed and reviewed? Then I would entertain a motion on the requested transfers under Chapter 44, Section 33B, requested by the town manager. I would make a motion to approve the requests as outlined. Um, by the town manager under Chapter 44, Section 33B. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, and before we vote, of course, this is all contingent on the Finance Committee also approving. Uh, but all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> None. Just you. <coughs>
Okay. Minutes. Last week's. Wow, I like the fact that we're up to date. It is excellent. Yeah. Warrants. Accounts payable in the amount of one hundred seventy-three thousand nineteen dollars and thirteen cents. Action file issues. Anyone? None. Committee reports. Building reuse committee. As I reported, we met on the uh, 15th of July, and our next meeting is on August 5th. Uh, and the meetings and the agenda for those meetings will always be posted on the uh, website under the town calendar. Excellent. Board of Health. Uh, Board of Health met on July 15th. Um, that property in Hickory Hills on Wildwood Road, um, that has been removed from the agenda until further notice because the, prop the owners have not given the information that either the Board of Health or the um, Conservation Commission need to determine the buildability. The buildability, I'm not sure exactly what the word is there. <laughs> Whether it can be built upon uh, and that and all the other, um, their business is uh, just the normal approvals that they've gone through okay. capital planning no new update finance committee uh, they will meet this thursday and i will be in attendance library board of trustees uh, the next meeting is in september mpo i was not able to attend the last meeting as i was out of town so i don't have an update planning board uh, meeting last night, MRPC gave a presentation. Um, they're doing some work under the last DLTA grant that we had received. And John Hume from MRPC gave an overview, and I believe the town manager has copies, which she can put in the action file. Um, but it focused on the economic development element of the master plan. Um, and he gave an overview, with the, which contained a lot of interesting statistics about um, Lunenburg. And they are going to be working on the next phase, which is to focus on the village center. As part of that, they will be sending out a town survey, um, which would be available on the website. And um, so they're looking at that. Uh, there's talk about possibly doing something like Survey Monkey so they can tabulate the results. But Marion has put that together, and that will be distributed. Um, some discussion that came up is how the new school will tie into the town center and walkability and that MRPC is going to have to take that into account in looking at the uh, town center outline and there's talk about putting together a village bylaw um, so that's what their focus is um, one of the discussions that did come out as part of the presentation last night was MRPC has some experience in brownfields, and there are three brownfields in Lunenburg and 925 Mass Ave being one of them, which is something we have talked about. Um, and I did talk with a town manager today. Apparently, MRPC is very experienced with working on brownfields and getting funding and grants and maybe a resource we want to look at. Um, the chair of the planning board did mention that it's something that the planning board is very interested in seeing um, put back into the tax base and, and cleaned up. So, um, In other business, they did talk about Highfield. It was extended again to August 13th because the engineer was not able to attend. Um, and apparently the reason for the extension is because of a MEPA review, which kind of raised an interesting question, at least in my mind, is, is um, MEPA reviews and when they're applicable. Um, so it is something I think the planning board needs to look at for, for other developments. Um, the gas station at Lemonster Shirley Road is underway. The foundation's in. There was a little bit of talk about the um, discussion that you had brought up a couple meetings ago, Mr. Chairman, about crosswalks. Uh, at near Emerald Place and the Rotary. It is something that they think we should look at and in conjunction with the DPW and this board, so Excellent. something that they'll look at. 
um, Lunenburg, I think it's called Lunenburg Estates, it's the Lloyd development yes. over in Whalum, yeah. uh, wants to go from 64 units to 80. As you all know, that's a 40B. It's not a um, under the planning board review, but the ZBA asked if the planning board had any input. There was some discussion. Some of the members felt it should stay at 64, but basically they decided to leave it up to the Zoning Board of Appeals. However, they did recommend that they look at incorporating sidewalks and how that development will tie into the lakefront and whether or not it makes sense to incorporate additional sidewalks for walkability in that area. Um, Asian Imperial again came up and apparently the fire department does not want a gate which was a requirement of the ZBA um, so that's still being looked at as far as parking and gates but is under the Zoning Board of Appeals. Tritown, um, the payment for the 33 new units is, is in process or the paperwork's in process. 40S payments, the assessors is still working on. The data is received from the school, but the assessors is putting together some more information. Um, fence at Tritown was a bit of a discussion, and I know you guys talked about that last week. Um, I was not here at the meeting, um, but there was some talk, and I know um, I think Mr. Matthews forwarded some information to the planning board. Um, but whether or not it made sense for the fence to be where it is, and it was on the plan, as you all know. Um, some members of the planning board felt that it should be moved, and there was a discussion, but no real outcome, um, but just that it should be looked at. The information that this board had, had looked at it at the last meeting and felt no action was needed was relayed. But... Um, and then finally, medical marijuana came up, um, and the planning director gave an overview of what other towns have done. Harvard and Shirley haven't taken any action yet. Pepperell has left it up to the Board of Selectmen to decide and to permit. Littleton and Townsend have adopted a one-year moratorium, and what the planning board decided to do is put forth um, an article for a one-year moratorium in the fall so that they can look at adopting what makes sense in the future. And there was a discussion about how federal laws tie into what the state of Massachusetts has done. Um, so that's something that one of the members would like to have looked at. What are they, what are they looking for, I mean, just so I understand the issue, I mean, what, what are they looking for a moratorium on or of? The adoption of a bylaw, you need a bylaw as to where they can be cited, how they can be cited, any requirements as to where they would be. It's um, just the sale? It's the sale of marijuana products? Yeah, for, yeah, med for medical, medical use, purposes? yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so they're looking at a moratorium. Right now, the state of Massachusetts has determined that a community can't say no. If someone came in with a request, the community can't say outright say no. Um, but they can put a one-year moratorium in order to look at where it makes sense, and, and so that's what the planning board is looking to do. Okay. So. On the uh, fence discussion, mm -hmm. I was watching, I watched most of the meeting, and it was kind of interesting. It was a little frustrating, honestly, as I was watching it and, and the comments that were being made. Um, it was, <clears throat> you know, we got involved with that fence, with the easement, with the license, agreement because somehow when Mr. Allison, a new member of the board, mm -hmm. he asked the exact same question I asked when we got involved with that. How did this get all the way through the planning process? How did this get through department review without it being realized that additional land was needed for the, uh, for the, for the road, for the access road? And how does it, we get that far into it? Actually, by the time we got involved, there was two buildings in the ground. Right. <clears throat> so <clears throat> more room was needed for the access road at the request of the fire department. Right. Um, so I, I, I kudos to Mr. Allison for asking that same question. I know we never really got a good answer on it. I don't imagine he will either. Um, but it felt like the tone and tenor of the meeting last night was somehow we were doing something wrong when what we had was an issue that came from the planning process, came to <laughs> us, we had the only way to resolve it, which was either an easement or in this case a license agreement, which we worked out with the developer, with the planning board, with the input of all, everyone involved again. So thinking this was all clear and, and, and well established and well resolved years ago, to have it come back up now later, it's, it's kind of surprising. And as far as where the fence is, well, the fence is there because there's an access road for the fire safety equipment to get through. If you put a fence between the public that's supposed to be protected and the buildings, 
and the public safety staff, which would be on the outside with the trucks, you defeat the whole purpose to have an offense. And I think Mr. Bacasa last night pointed that out. You need to have the street inside the fence so that they can access the buildings. You can't separate them. And that was confirmed with the fire chief today. I talked to him, and he's going to confirm that with the planning board himself directly. <clears throat> there was additional discussion about, you know, if there was a liability issues, et cetera. Well, the license agreement includes language, hold harmless language, includes requirement that the developer carry insurance holding the town harmless from any liability, and it's entirely on them. So if little Johnny trespasses on the fence and gets hurt, the issue is with little Johnny's parents and it's with the developer, the property owner. It's not with the town of Lunenburg. I just want to say, you know, looking at this license agreement, and you're right, we did come into it way too late in the process, and, and I share your frustration that oh, the Board of Selectmen didn't get involved. In the, the other issue I had was a statement was made that we want the license agreement rather than an easement because we wanted to avoid going to town meeting. And we did go to town meeting. We did go to town meeting. We go to town meeting, we, you know, when I was chair, we were, we were condemned for going to town meeting as often as we did. Um, you know, people wanted leadership or, you know, this board to grab the bull by the horns and cut out the taxpayers, cut out the voters, and just make our own decisions. We do everything transparently. And we did that at town meeting, and it was voted unanimously. And at the same time we did that, we did an easement agreement. We got land back under easement from the developer alongside the entrance road to the, to the landfill so that we could accommodate the solar project, should that have ever happened, as well as to make sure we had access additional access to the conservation land. So again, a few years ago, we went through a whole process to, to answer a whole bunch of different questions. And we included everybody. And we came to a good solution. And in hindsight, looking at bits and pieces, we're going down this rabbit hole where people are throwing random kind of things out that aren't based in fact. And it's just frustrating to me, personally. Well, I, would, I mean, from my point of view, what I am not really perfectly clear on is I agree with everything you said about the history. I was, I was on the board at the time, too, and, and we all agreed then that this was coming to us very late, and we needed to help resolve a situation that really only the Board of Selectmen could resolve, and even though we were brought in after when we thought we would, we, everybody agreed on what the solution was. What I'm not understanding is what is the actual complaint or concern about the fence now, and where is it coming from? Because I don't think it's coming from the, the planning board, my understanding. Well, I, I can tell you where it's coming from. It's coming from um, Steve DeBettencourt came to a planning board meeting and raised the concern about the fence. And I do want to say, when, when we looked at this, and it did come to us very, very late, and I actually had a lot of questions about the easement and the language of the easement, and frankly, did not, was not aware that a fence was involved. Mm -hmm. um, and And apparently neither was Mr. DeBettencourt who was on the board and he is questioning now the fence is because in e a fire easement he was not aware that a fence was going to be constructed and he is concerned about closing off access should we want to use that process again because now it is a fence and so it is now that land is now essentially part of the Tritown <coughs> development versus an easement which he thought was the case which was to pass and repass for fire protection, which frankly was my understanding when we went through this. And, and the language of the license agreement does not specifically talk about um, a fence, um, but it's very clear on the plan. And very looking clear. At the plan, on the planning and, and, board and, plan. And the, on the planning board plan that, that the, the fence was going to be that's, 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 my, exactly. that's my point. My exactly. point is that they can, the developer can produce, and nobody in, in either this board or the planning board is saying that, <laughs> no, the plan that they're pointing out is incorrect, right. that it shows the fence. And I'm still un, not understanding what the objection is to the fence. I mean, is the, is the, the 12-foot area that we're talking about, like, did we have special plans that we don't know about that would preclude us from wanting to have put the fence there to begin with? I wasn't at the meeting that Mr. DeBettencourt raised this concern. I can only tell you what I heard at a subsequent meeting when the, when the members were talking about it, and that was the, the concern about adverse possession did come up, is that if it, it's now part of the right. development and, again, that's, and I said it, that last week, right. so if, if that in, is the In the, point, li in the my, license agreement, it clearly states that that can't happen. Right, and also, and if so, we needed to... Which the gentleman and, signed. And if we needed to, according to the town manager, she believes that developers would be amenable to just... Adding the language that says, and the fencing, just if anybody has any worries that this is going to happen, if that's the concern, it's pretty easily addressed at pretty, 
not no cost, but almost no cost. I mean, I, I can't believe that adding a clause in there, including the fence, is going to cost any kind of money to do. And the developer agreed to move the fence, but right. again, that would subvert the whole point of the right. fence right. and right. the fire department. So. Right. Yes, yeah, so you got to fight the fire uh, over the fence. Right, exactly. <laughs> and if someone needs help, just run down the end and come back again. What I would ask, and, and I share the frustration, because I think after seeing the plan, and again, I wasn't here at last week's meeting, but after looking at the information, it's very clearly shown on the plan, which I think we only saw bits and pieces, and we didn't have the whole notes. We only had sections of the plan when we looked at this, because, again, it did come to us very late in the process. Um, but... It's on the plan. Right. I mean, and the fence is where it's shown on the plan. Right, um, and it has no no negative impact on town operations, no negative impact on DPW it, see, operations. That's what my that's my no ask, negative let me impact. Ask the question though, and I agree with you that I I mean I don't see any negative impacts, and from what I've heard from the fire department, it makes sense to keep it where it is. Is there a possibility? Why are we willing to consider selling that land? This is just something that's in my mind. If we've allowed the fence to be constructed, and we've it's now part of the development essentially. Why don't we look at a sale versus a license agreement? Well, if we sell it, we'll definitely never be able to read. But, but why do we need it? I have I mean, no idea. We've just talked about that. What, did we, we sell the it? rest of the land no, where no. the we building didn't sell No, we didn't sell any land. We gave a license agreement, which my understanding was just for fire access. And again, I wasn't aware of the fence. But where but the buildings are, too? That's on their land. That's, that's on their that's, land. That's okay. their that was on the Tritown land. That's not, nothing yeah. to do with us. But my question is, is if there's now a fence and it's part of the development, why don't we consider a sale of the property? I, well, I mean, well I mean, we could consider, um, first of all, I'm sure we could consider it, right. obviously. The real question is, why would the developer want to buy it? Right. They already have a license to it. Why would I pay for it? But why are we willing to, to just give them the land well, and construct a fence? And it's make fair it enough to ask the question, two questions. It's fair enough to ask the question, why do we allow it to begin with? But by minutes, it was done, right? right? So right. this board and the planning board approved it. We can look at the process and say, hey, listen, we, we really, and we did at the time, mm -hmm. say we should get into this process earlier for yeah. issues that involve town property. Right. But that doesn't change the fact that we have duly voted on this. And, we've and we should just agreement. get by it. But so, again, I don't think, I, the, a, a question about a fence never came up. I mean, when we had this discussion, because I had a lot of concerns about the utilities going in, because it was, there, if you guys remember, there was utilities within the easement and how mm -hmm. that was going to work. And, but the whole idea of a fence never came up. And I certainly didn't know that a fence was going to be placed on town property. And now, because essentially that land is now part of the Tritown development, which frankly, I don't have a huge problem with. I don't either. But if, but if that's the case, why don't we look at transferring the property to them legally rather than having a license agreement? All I'm saying is like, even the amount of conversation we're having here tonight, <laughs> we should either decide that it's fine where it is and let's move on, or it's not fine where it is and we'll play a fight that, you know, hey, you have to remove it or move it or whatever. I mean, it doesn't make sense to move it. So we're talking about either leaving it or removing it. Good now, point. if we want to fight the fact that hey, we're going to have to probably pay for it if we ask him to remove it because it was on the plan. Well, he's, he apparently, and again, I don't know, but what was said last night is the developer is amenable to moving it. Yeah, but yeah. Moving but, but, it from, but, but from a fire, fire perspective, it was, it's, it's, it, right. right. I mean, you need, they need to be able to get around the building. Right. right. So they need to have access to that land. But I'm just saying, what is the benefit to the town to give up that 12-foot strip around the circumference of the property? Why don't we look at seeing if he's amenable to purchasing it and eliminating the question? I mean, Mr. Chairman, uh, having viewed the meeting last night as an unbiased viewer and having not been part of the, the vote when it occurred, it seems to me like some good work was done when it was done and we're spending an awful lot of town time and effort on an issue that's not an issue. And I would recommend that we just declare it not an issue and move on. The, the, the one point I would say is that if we take the long view and think about 50 to 60 years out, and if Tritown were to be demolished, at that point the easement may or may not be valid for the purposes that it was there. I don't know the actual language. And if there is a concern about adverse possession, then if we have a license, then we would want to have the language to say the fence is included in the license so that at some point that license would terminate, that land would revert back to the town, and that would be that. 
The bigger question becomes is that when the easement was contemplated, was there any contemplation that the town would use that land as a roadway as well? Or was it always assumed that it was not going to be used except for fire access? It was always fire access and it's gated. Well, there was talk, and this came up when we talked about it, is the, the potential other uses of that land, whether it be for conservation purposes and the conservation is looking at a gravel operation. Which is or, why we got the easement from them. Right. For that access But road, I don't from, know where the road, the road is end. in relationship to where that is. So, but what we're, this, this, this is what we're talking about is behind the property. So we have an easement from the developer so we can access conservation and the landfill and we can do utilities if needed. This license spurs off of that behind the property to make sure that we can always get fire trucks and or ambulance back behind there. So there's two different properties in question, two different easements, licenses. It's fairly involved. Right. And I, you know, four years ago we did this. Right, I, I recall that, but and I don't, again, know. I don't remember ever discussion about a fence. I mean, I remember, because the uh, easement, if they, the question came up about exactly what they needed and what it, was it going completely around the property from the roadway, there were, and we had a couple meetings on this. And, and again, we came into this process extremely late. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I would just question, I, I don't know, I haven't seen the fence. I don't know if the fence goes from the roadway or if it's, it, does it just block the landfill from the? That fence just blocks the landfill. So their landfill, you get your brush operations are right behind the fence. Okay. So they're, you know, in that area behind there. I think, Bob, you said you were in there bringing debris. So it's right behind is, you know, there's the buildings, there's the roadway, there's the fence, and then there's the brush operations. Okay. So it doesn't go all the way around. It's just. I mean, eventually it. it's going to go all the way around that whole property when it gets built out, when the phases are built. So that will follow through. I'm not sure how it's going to end. I can't remember now, but. And it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world to have a fence around uh, such a large development to keep people from going onto going the town on property to the town and property, right. back. And since we already have access through the main access road, we really don't need that to get to our property. And since they always have the right to use that and it has to be kept as a fire easement, the fence really doesn't affect that unless we wanted to drive on that ourselves. And if we do, the license agreement allows us to revoke it sure. to, to, to do that. Right. So we don't lose that ability, I don't think, and which is why we have a license agreement, right. because yeah. if we need right. to be able right. to get access and we want to change it, we can. Right. So then to make it clear, I would suggest that the chairman's comment about amending the license to add the fence so therefore, if we needed to at some point add a gate, move it, or whatever, I think we should then, look then at you would have the same rights as you do with the underlying easement. I would agree. And I would think that that would be we a- We have a majority of the board who believes that we should look into that. Yes, and just okay. so update okay. the wording. I thought we talked about that last week, to be honest, that we include the fence in the wording and we're done. Right. Okay. That one might be the longest committee report ever. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk. <laughs> Uh, PAC is meeting tonight as we speak. Don't they like you, Mr. Ebersol? Uh, <laughs> don't know. <laughs> school, school committee. Uh, I have not met. School building committee. A uh, subgroup of us had interviews actually here last Wednesday all day with the four uh, construction manager at risk uh, candidates. We were going to have it over at TC Pasios, but we realized it was going to be about a 9,500 degree day, and there's no AC over there, so mm -hmm. we moved it here. Um, but uh, we were we had good meetings, good presentations from all four of them. Bottom line is, of the four, you know, any four of them could probably do a good job. You know, three more sure than one. It was quickly, you know, one kind of dropped out. Um, we had a final that we were very, very impressed with, and we wanted to do business with. But the way the MSBA does it, and we follow their procedure, is you, you qualify the responses without talking about cost. And after you qualify the responses, then you look at the bids, which they bid on the service. And the person, the, the group that we really liked was substantially more money than everybody else. And we couldn't justify that money. So we're going back to the committee tomorrow night. The school building committee will meet and we'll finalize the, uh, the final choice. So um, it's a good step forward. It's a good process. I, I was going to say, say I was going to say that there is actually a lot to be said about the mm -hmm. process where you basically divorce the two until the end. Yeah. So you just listen to what people have to offer and. You know. Yeah. So I mean, the folks from from ROPM um, were very good. The designer of the building was very good. He was involved. So I mean, we got a lot of good um, experience in the room, which was nice. Excellent. So. 
Sewer Commission. Um, Highfields is also on their agenda. Uh, they're negotiating an allocation with them. Uh, they were the ones that actually brought the sewer from Fitchburg up to the Walmart area, and they had an allocation as part of that. That allocation expired. So they're in the process of renegotiating that allocation as it relates to the intermunicipal agreement with Fitchburg and the cost to fix the pipe that the Fitchburg has on John Fitch Highway. So that whole process is continuing at that point. They're not slowing anything down, but they're talking to them about that process. They never don't tell us that they brought the sewer in. That's, <laughs> that, 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 is, that is their whole story their every sentence. time they want one of their expired extensions to yep, be extended. Right. And I don't know how long we're willing to keep doing that, but I was kind of at the, when I was in the, that seat, and I was the, one of the junior members, I, I said right then, like, this is the last time that personally I'll ever approve <laughs> it. I mean, you, you, how many years do they want? What is it, 14 years now or something yep. like that? And counting. So, but the other good part about it is that the, the proposed layout, at least when I was on the commission, was that they would bring the pipe um, through Maple Parkway and White Street, which are parts that need to be sewered in the district and would not cost the town. We wouldn't have to go out to bid on that process. So there was a give and take on that part. Um, so that was, will remain to be seen on that. Um, um, they have uh, opened and reviewed, finalized the bids for their pump maintenance contract, um, and they're just um, finishing the contracting process with that. I don't have the name of the company at the moment. Um, they are in the process of doing their billing for the most recent quarter, which just to remind people that they did it increase the rate uh, and they did it for that billing uh, for that quarter. Um, and the people will see that in their bill when that comes up. And it looks like that spur on Lancaster Avenue is nearing completion. I know that there was a lot of construction for that extension, correct? That's correct. And no update on mass broadband, although I gotta believe it's being lit up here uh, soon. So I have to get in touch, I may have to get in touch with them proactively because it was supposed to be around this time frame. They were actually supposed to do some work last week, but it didn't appear. I looked out the window when they were supposed to be doing it, and oh, I didn't I, see I wasn't anything. Even <laughs> going on the pole. Yeah. It could have been the heat. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, you try to see the laser. It's hard to see fiber optic light in the in the daytime. So, um, town manager reports. Um, I I did want to let you know that I sent out that letter to both of the um, town committees regarding election workers and asked that they have their nominations back to you. I believe I said August 6th so that we could have that on the agenda for the 13th. Um, I have been busy working with several departments on um, procurement issues. This is something that takes a... It, takes a significant amount of time for the big procurements. I've, I've worked with DPW on their asphalt bid. Um, we did actually receive a handful of bids for our uh, purchase of asphalt, and the low bidder was Keatings, and the bid was a dollar less per ton than we've had in the past. And we do, um, we do a one-year contract with the, the option of two one-year extensions. Um, but but the price does the price can fluctuate, uh, but but we were lucky to um, to get that bid. I worked with the board of assessors. Um, we went through the process of advertising uh, for regional assessor, and we did we did have a couple of companies request bid packets, but we only had one returned, and we do have a, a new three year contract with. Um, with Harold Scheid's group again. And third, I, I think Selectman Abersall mentioned outsourcing of pump maintenance. I've been working with the Sewer Commission. They have um, just finalized an agreement with small water utilities, um, a company out of Littleton. They come very highly recommended. Uh, they've done some work with the Lunenburg Water District before. Their bid actually is $75,000. Um, and the Sewer Commission did estimate that we are spending, uh, they, they are spending about $100,000 currently for that same service. So that was a very worthwhile endeavor. Um, it does mean that the, the employee that they have will be 
officially laid off, but we do have an opening in DPW that will be offered to him, and hopefully he will be staying along with us. So uh, a good good situation for ratepayers that receive um, sewer service from the Sewer Commission. And I think that's it. Good. Just quickly, a couple of weeks ago we had talked about the paving, yes. and you had mentioned oh. there was a new yes. process they were going to try and let you correct and that. um yes i had mentioned mulpus road and i actually meant cross street and i was thinking cross street when i said mulpus road and i was talking about that short you know that short section of <laughs> mulpus road but it was actually cross street and i did want to mention that um, on august 13th i will have the dpw director come in to talk about road maintenance and <coughs> also to demo um, a, a new database that we have for street signs we are under a mandate. We had put some extra funding in the budget for the last couple of years. We have to conform our, all of our signs, um, traffic signs and street signs to a, a new standard. And so we had to inventory and then we'll be in a process of replacing. So he will be demoing that and then talking about some um, potential changes to the uh, road maintenance plan. What we want to, when we started that, uh, I guess it was three years ago, and we did that in-house, um, and it, it's worked really well, but, you know, what we're seeing right now is we just have all of our roads in one inventory, and everything is, um, all of the roads are looked at under the same criteria, but we have, for instance, the, the top of, the top right now is Summer Street. Summer Street's a project that we'll have grant funding for. Uh, next down we have Chase Road and it's likely that Chase Road will have some grant funding so we just want to be able to customize that a little bit to identify roads that we're looking at um, obtaining grant funding so we don't have the appearance that we're skipping over things we're just looking at different funding sources and we also um, I think want to provide or we want to account for these these roads that we just did where we have a series of potholes in a stretch of road that maybe we have a certain amount of money that we budget each year to address those so those don't completely fail while we're trying to redo the other roads so we we want to throw some ideas out on how we think we can make the plan a little bit better because obviously we're not funding it to the level that we need to we're not making the progress that we need to so the roads are deteriorating faster and we just have had some experience with this and we think we can make the plan a little bit better so we'd like to throw that out to you as well so that will be august 13th if we're talking about and one of the goals of the board of selectmen was to have department heads in front of us i would offer that in september i'd like to have the two chiefs uh chief of police and, and the fire chief in front of us because i'd like to have them review how the transfer to the regionalization that'll give them enough time to have uh, be able to summarize for us how that transition uh, went and is going. Okay. We have uh, two appointments today. These are both reappointments that um, were missed somehow when we did all of the reappointments back in June. The first is um, Stanley Young. As constable, he is currently a constable and should have been reappointed back in June, and it was not um, due to an oversight. As um, with Jean Larkin, who is currently, had, had served as a member of the Senior Tax Work-Off Committee and had requested reappointment as well. So I would entertain a motion on both of those reappointments. I would make a motion to appoint Stanley Young as constable and Jean Larkin to the Senior Tax Work-Off Committee. I have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. So they are reappointed. Uh, the only remaining item is the Board of Selectmen Policies and Procedures, which we are going to do in a workshop setting, so that will not be televised. The meeting will continue, but we will be moving to the conference table in our uh, workshop environments. Don't make for good TV. We'll be talking about language and policies as we review them that would be hard if you didn't have a copy to uh, to really follow so we'll do that uh, now but before that I will ask if there's any further comment public comment from the board uh, one question for Kerry um, has the governor released 
chapter 90, the other half? Not or? to my knowledge, okay. no. And any likelihood of that, or is that all tied up in the transportation bond debt discussion? Well, I, I think that's probably tied up even longer than the budget discussion, and the budget discussion is still tied up at this point. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I did want to comment on one thing. I don't usually comment on... Uh, on articles in the paper, but in a local paper, there was a report about a complaint being filed uh, uh, that happened on election day. Uh, I just want to clarify to the people at home that this board has not received any complaint, nor would we receive any complaint as any election day complaints about any election law potential violations or alleged violations would be submitted to the Secretary of State. So I just want to let people know that there is no formal complaint that this board has received or are addressing, uh, just to be clear. And that complaint is at the Secretary of State of Massachusetts, where it uh, will be investigated there. So I just wanted to comment on that, because I think it may have read uh, possibly otherwise. Other than that, uh, I think we will adjourn for a couple of minutes. So we can get settled over for the workshop. I'll say good night to everybody, and we will see you next Tuesday. Oh, uh, no, we won't see you next Tuesday. Next Tuesday is a workshop, not televised. So we will see you on the following Tuesday, which is August 6th. Thank you, and good night. One is next here on 99.5 WCRB Classical New England. Music on classical.